Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with the NVIDIA Shield. Now for those of you that subscribe, you know I've already done a full review of this device, and this portable Android gaming console is, in my opinion, one of the most unique gadgets of the year. You've got a Tegra 4 quad-core processor complemented by 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of internal storage, a micro SD card slot uh, for storage expansion, as well as a USB port for charging and file transfer, uh, HDMI out, headphone jack. You can see there's active cooling on this because the Tegra 4 is uh, one of those chips that requires it. Um, and that's why there's quite a bit of ventilation on this controller that really houses an entire gaming console. At launch, there were a lot of question marks. People wondered whether or not it would be a flop. And the fact that the updates keep coming, and that's why I'm revisiting it now, we've got yet another update for this device, really do, at least in my opinion, point to the fact that NVIDIA uh, love it or hate it, is going to make sure that they do their best to make the Shield a success, especially in this brand new generation of console wars. Uh, granted, it's tough to compare a device like this to the PS4 or Xbox One, but it is a gaming alternative because of the extension that it is to a console many others use the actual computer. With that said, let me open the device up and we'll be greeted by the update, which you can see right there and essentially just telling us that we've got a 22.3 megabyte update, uh, software update, and basically it goes over uh, the bug fixes, all of that. I'm not gonna show you on the actual uh, shield itself. I'm instead gonna spice things up a little bit here and bring in NVIDIA's second product that they've made this year. And this is a first, NVIDIA's never made their own hardware, to, and that includes graphics cards. I mean, all of their cards are manufactured by third parties. They've been a fabulous uh, semiconductor company since the start. I've followed them since their inception. Big fan, uh, one-time shareholder, uh, and I do like what they do. No, no denying it. They make very good products, and this latest Tegra Note 7 is yet another example. But focusing on those release notes uh, for the Shield, you can see right there uh, we've got the date being December 2nd, so as recent as it could possibly be. You've got the Grid Cloud Gaming feature has been added. So basically, if you live close enough and have a high enough quality connection, close enough that is being in Northern California to uh, where NVIDIA servers are, you will have the ability to game using your shield on the cloud, something that uh, is in beta, but uh, of course has always been one of the main goals for uh, NVIDIA with the shield whether or not anyone ever perceived it as such. The next thing is the game stream feature, which is going to improve your streaming performance. Uh, specifically, you now have 1080p at 60 frames per second when you're in console mode. So if you want to turn this into a console, use a Bluetooth controller and stream games from your computer, you now can do it at the highest quality available, something that was missing before. Uh, moving on, you also have improved Wi-Fi streaming. You can see we now have 720p 60 frames per second over Wi-Fi. Uh, so that's yet another improvement. Uh, lastly, there requires, of course, the GeForce Experience version 1.8 for PC, which you'll have to download from uh, NVIDIA's website. It's an optim optimization tool as well as basically host software for the entire Shield experience and the GeForce product line. Uh, we've also got gamepad mapping that's new and improved, uh, which is important. This is uh, a beta feature. They've got profiles in the community that are being shared, which is certainly uh, an important thing to, to continue to develop the usefulness and practicality of the Shield as an Android gaming console. More importantly, they now have uh, mapping for motion-based games. So when, you know, gyro simulation is what's needed, you can actually do it now with the uh, thumbsticks. So that's another improvement, uh, as well as the accelerated cursor option, uh, full screen mode updates. You can see right there listed and finally, Tegra Zone updates. And that's pretty much it. Balance of the release log is here, and they've been really active. I mean, that's why I'm sharing it with all of you, is that they've done a really good job on staying consistent with updating this product. And the Shield, in my opinion, now at its new price, which is uh, $249.99, and includes the uh, case, which originally retailed for $39.99, uh, is a compelling value in the holiday season. There's no question about it that NVIDIA is being aggressive here. They've changed a lot about what this device can do. 
Uh, they've lowered the price. I mean, remember, this was originally supposed to be a $350 device. They lowered it to three in order to basically pacify consumer feedback. At least that was their uh, PR release. And now we've got a device that's even less expensive, still packs one of the best processors, mobile processors on the market, does so in a really, at, at least console quality controller experience, built-in five inch screen, and again, expandable storage, pretty much a high-end Android tablet built into a gaming controller. But NVIDIA doing quite well, in my opinion, right now, between the Shield and the, the uh, Tegra Note 7, their latest edition. But like these software updates, look forward to getting back to you after I actually install it and giving feedback on what the performance is like uh, with streaming and just the overall uh, improvements for using this as a true portable gaming console. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.